Example four, we are asked to solve the following triangles. As usual, we'll round the sides to one decimal place, the nearest tenth, and angles to the nearest whole number or the nearest degree. So we look at A. We see that we're missing a side, we're missing two angles. So we ask ourselves, can we use Sokotoa? Answer is no, we don't have a right angle triangle. We can't use Pythagorean theorem for the same reason. So then we try to use the sine law. Do we know an opposite angle side combination? The answer is no. I know angle F, but I don't know little f. I know side G, but I don't know angle G. I know side H, but I don't know angle H. So I can't use the sine law. But because I know side angle side, okay, so guys, we know side angle side That means we can use the first form of the cosine law. That first form of the cosine law, copying it from your formula sheet, says a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times the cosine of angle a. So what you can find using this form of the law is you can find that third side, which is side f. So remember, you start off, if you're finding f, you start off with f squared, equaling. There's only two sides there that you've got, so 3.8 squared plus 3.5 squared minus 2 times 3.8 times 3.5 times the cosine of that angle in the middle, 75 degrees. We don't press equals in the middle of typing this in. So 3.8 squared plus 3.5 squared minus 2 times 3.8 times 3.5 times the cosine of 75. That means that F squared is 19.8 zero five one no four one three it looks like but how do we go from f squared to f we need the square root so i'm going to copy down a whole bunch of decimal places here so f is about four point four five zero three two seven now, your answer for F, you will round off to 4.5. Okay, I'll highlight that. But if we have to use side F in another calculation, we're going to use the more exact form. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to write that this side F is 4.4503. Two, seven. All right, we've, saw, we've found side F. Now what we need to do is find one of those angles. So pick an angle that you want to find. It doesn't matter whether you find G or H. So let's find H. I now have enough information to use the sine law because for angle F, I know both the angle and the opposite side. So I'm going to circle this opposite angle, opposite side combination because I can use that in my sine law then to find angle H, as you've seen me do many times. Because we're finding an angle, we're going to put angles on the top. So using that blue pairing, I'm going to go sine of 75 over his opposite. Don't use 4.5, use something more exact. 4.450327. I know that that's a pain, but we have to keep this as accurate as, accurate as possible. 
equaling sine of the angle I want, sine of angle H, over his opposite, 3.8. Notice my unknown sitting right there in the top. So the sine of H, remember we will be going 3.8 times the sine of 75 divided by 4.450327. Remember what we're doing there? We multiply these two guys together. We divide by the 4.45 value. So typing that into my calculator, 3.8 times the sine of 75, make sure you close up that bracket on the sine, divided by, now, here's a cool little thing. I have that 4.450327 number showing on my calculator. So I could say, just say divided by that answer equals. So that now is the sine of H. Sine of H is 0 0.82477. But how are you going to get H? Well, H will be the inverse sine of 0 0.82477. So if I do that, second function sine of that answer, 55.56 to one decimal place, we're gonna call that 56 degrees. Okay, going to highlight that. Now that you know that H is 56, okay, I'm just gonna mark that here as being 56, we can now find angle G just by subtracting from 180 degrees. We don't have to do anything fancy here. So I'm just going to say that angle G, okay, angle G will be 180 minus that 75 that was given. There goes my calculator again. And then minus the 56. And if I do that on my calculator, 180 minus 75 minus 56, G is going to turn out to be 49 degrees, and I'll highlight that. So, a lot of work to get answer A done, and now we'll move then on to B. And I'm not going to have a lot of room, but I think I can squish all this in. So in B, doesn't look like I have a right angle triangle. Can't use Sokotoa, can't use Pythagorean theorem. But what's important about this guy is do you see the opposite angle, opposite side combination? The minute you see that, you know you can use your sine law. You can use your sine law to find angle A because it looks like you have side A. So using my sine law, finding an angle, going to put angles on top. So I will say the sine of the 135 that I know divided by his opposite side, 26.4, equaling the sine of the angle I want, A, over his opposite, 16.2. You take note that your unknown is sitting right up there where he always is. So now you will know that the sine of A can be found by going 16.2 times the sine of 135 divided by 26.4. Doing that on my calculator, 16.2 times the sine of 135, make sure you get close up that bracket, divided by 26.4. So that gives me sine of A equaling 0 0.433906. 
And how do you go from sine A to A? where well, you're going to take the inverse sine of that decimal value. So second function sine of that answer. And we're going to get that angle A is 25.7157, which to the nearest whole number, we will round to 26 degrees. So I will highlight that. A is 26. Okay, next. Now that you know that A is 26, so I'm just going to write that in a different color here. A is about 26. Could you now find angle C by simply subtracting from 180? So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say angle C would be 180 minus the 135 minus the 26. So 180 minus 135 minus 26 should give me 19 degrees. Highlight that. Maybe. Oh, my highlighter doesn't want to come. Coming right back, guys. So C is 19. So I will put 19 here. Now, should we probably be using a value more exact than 19? Yeah, probably we should, but usually we get away with always just using angles to the nearest whole number. So I'm gonna be a bit sloppy here and just use 19 degrees. Now, how are we gonna find little c? Well, we still have we still have this blue opposite angle, opposite side combination. So now, knowing that C was 19, I can use 19 and the opposite side of little c. I'll use my sine law again to find little c. I'm finding a side, so sides will go on the top using that blue opposite angle side combination. The side is 26.4 over the sine of opposite angle, which was 135, equaling what I want to find, which is C, over the sine of angle C, which we got to be 19. We know then that to find C, I'm going to have to squish it in way over here. Sorry about this, guys. C will equal, we take 26.4 times the sine of 19 divided by the sine of 135. And if I type that in my calculator, 26.4 times the sine of 19, make sure you close up that bracket, divided by the sine of 135, I'm coming up with 12.2, and I'm sure there's some kind of units on that. Actually, no, they didn't. So we'll just go 12.2, and I will highlight that. Now, I just want to say one other little thing. In my calculations, okay, in my calculations, okay, this C value of 19, okay, being more exact, it's actually 19.2843 degrees. And if you used 19.2843 in your calculation, C would actually come out to be 12.3. And 12.3 is actually a more exact answer. So I would suggest you check with your teacher 
Um, find out just how many decimal places your teacher wants you to use in the middle of a question. And that, guys, concludes our lesson three on the cosine law. Coming up next in lesson four, we will look at some application questions.